restores my faith in Him. He helps me to do what I must do the most. That's why I'm saved. That's why I'm saved. That's why I'm saved.
that where I am, ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way, ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. We are here today to celebrate the life of Miss Carolyn Patrick Harrison. Can we just put our hands together? the life that God allowed her to share with us. To some, she was a mother. To some, she was a sister. To others, she was auntie. And to others, friend. To some, confidant. To my wife, she was a recipe sharer. I mean, everybody has their personal uh, memories. And so today, we are here to celebrate, even though it's a time where we're sad and we're grieved, we want to give her a real celebration. How about you? <laughs> Let me set aside this moment in this space for visitation. And so um, you can visit with the family now or y'all can visit amongst each other and as people come, they will visit with you and the service will start promptly at three o'clock. All right, we can visit now. Okay. All right, we come to celebrate the life of Miss Carolyn Patrick Harrison. So we just give God some praise.
words before I read. I just want all my family to know I love each and every one of y'all, even though we don't see each other. I'm saying it again. I love each and every one of y'all. Let me start with verse 28. Has thou not known? Has thou not heard? That the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. In verse 31, but they wait, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Let me say that again. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not be weary.
talking about it in the church chat, checking to see how things are going and how everyone is. And so let us pray. Father, we love you. You are so great. And you are so awesome. And we thank you because we have you on our side. We can declare that it is well. Yes. That even though our hearts are heavy and we are grieving and it's all right to grieve, it's all right to cry. Amen. We know hope yes. as that people with no hope. Yes. But our hope is in you. God, and we are sure yes. that after this, yes. God, we'll be with you yes. in glory. Yes. So God, we thank you that she stepped out of time into eternity. Yes. And so though we miss her here, heaven is rejoicing to receive its own back. So Father, we ask that you would comfort this family, that you would be with them even in the days and months and years to come. That you would hold them in that midnight hour when we're not around and they are feeling that pain, God. We ask that you would feel that void because God, you would be a mother. You would be a father. Whatever we need you to be, God, you will be it. So we ask that you would step in and be with this family. And comfort them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, can we just celebrate? God is good. I said, God is good. It's all right for y'all to talk back to me. I said, God is good. And all the time. A good God. Going to have another selection from the combined choir.
takes first. Because he didn't fix some stuff for me. Have you ever fixed anything for anybody in here? Just wave your hand and say, God, I thank you for fixing it for me. I didn't know what I was going to do, but you fixed it. I didn't know who else to turn to, but you fixed it. God, thank you for fixing it. She will truly be missed. Heaven has gained an angel. Carolyn Rist in heaven. Cousin Vernon. Body Ingram from Columbus, Ohio. I join you in grieving the loss of Carolyn, such a wonderful and caring, decent person. I have the good memories of ch our childhood we spent together at family gatherings and reunions. The world is now without one of the good people. With love and prayers from my family to your family, your cousin, Bonnie Ingram. Doris Brown from Charlotte, sending my condolences to the Harrison family. Kim Cook, may Carlin now rest in eternal peace. Condolences to her beloved family are all in my prayers today in the days ahead. Alice Simpson from Brown Summit, James and family, sending love and sympathy to all at this difficult time. I remember Carolyn well. We were the same age. Take care. <clears throat> to the family of Carolyn Harrison, the entire St. Paul's Baptist Church family joins together in extending to you our heartfelt sympathy, love, prayers, and support in the passing of your loved one. Death is never a welcome experience. However, as people of faith, we are consoled by the certainty that through Christ Jesus, we are yet trying. Please know that we share your grief and pain. Although your hearts are heavy now, please remember that Sister Harrison has passed to a life of eternal victory, joy, and peace. In the presence of our God, she is now free from all sickness, pain, sorrow, and woe. We can take comfort in this rich reality. Even as you mourn her past, remember to cherish her memory. Remember the love, life, and laughter she shared with each of you while she lived. Then know that nothing in time or eternity can ever erase the fellowship you shared or the ways in which you loved one enriched life. The scriptures offer encouragement in each of us as we walk through the valley of the region. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Psalms 46, 1. May God comfort you and give you perpetual peace. If there is any way we can offer to you or any member of your family additional support, love, encouragement, or counsel beyond this moment, please do not hesitate to ask. You are not alone. God is with you, and so are we. In love, we offer our condolence on behalf of the staff, the ministers, the diaconate, and executive council. And this comes from the St. Paul's Baptist Church, Richmond, Virginia, Dr. Lawrence D. Watson, Senior Pastor.
with our deepest sympathy. To everything there is a season and a time to every person purpose under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 and 2. On Tuesday, May 10th, 2022, God looked down and saw that your loved one and our friend Carolyn Patrick, Harrison's frail earthly body, had gotten tired and restless on this journey of life. So God opened up the heavens and called heaven, called Carolyn home so she could be free. We know that it's hard to lose a loved one, but just know that God will be right there when you need him most. We are praying that God will sustain you now and in the days to come. As a church family, we want to say to Patrick, Thelma, James, Melvin, and the entire Patrick, Cripe, and Harrison families that we love you. Please know that if there's anything that we can do to help you through this most difficult time, now she knows the true meaning of being free. Today, we believe if our dear Carly would speak, she would share these words. I'm free. Today, my soul is resting in the bosom of the Lord. I have finally made it, dear ones, to that river we all must cross. I'm free. No more pain and suffering, and God knows no more hospital stays. I can walk and talk with Jesus, and I'm rejoicing every day. I'm free. Don't worry, dear family, about me. Just do as I have done. Hold fast to God's unchanging hand, for the victory is already won. I'm free. I never got discouraged. I never gave up the fight. But God was ready for me, and through the darkness of death, he brought me to the light. I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. Yes. Only submitted Monday, May 16, 2022. Pastor James E. and Sister Jacqueline Lee and the Locust Grove Church family. Dear friends and family, please be advised that I have moved. I received a call from God, the chief architect, the other day, and he informed me that my new home was complete. On Tuesday, May 10th, 22, he told me to go ahead and change my address. Well, my new home is finished, and what a sight it is to behold. It is located on an exclusive estate area behind a beautiful curly gate. Of course, you know the streets are paved with gold, and every day is Sunday. Grace is my garden here, and I talk with my master without a worry or care. I live at 7148 Fox Hunt Road, Charlotte, North Carolina, for a short while. But my new home is so much better than any place I have ever lived. There is so much peace, joy, happiness, no pain or heartache. No pills or doctors, no strife or discontentness, only sweet serenity. I can dine at the master's bountiful table and listen to his heavenly choir. And best of all, my heavenly father is here in glory. And oh yes, I have my very own designer here who has fitted me with my very own white robe and my wings. I can, could go on and on about my new home but instead, I'm going to pray that you get moved here yourself one day. Yes. Let me give you my new address. Carolyn P. Harrison, 112748, Heavenly Circle. Come on. Resurrection City, Heaven, 051022. Oh. Oh, P.S. I do not have a cell phone. But you can always call on God. Yeah. If you do not know his number, read your Bible. Amen. 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 Acknowledgements, we certainly appreciate your condolences and prayers during this difficult time. We will cherish the members of our loved one today and forever. May God bless you for being there for us. The family of Carolyn P. Harrison. Thank you. 
And on behalf of the family, they would have me to say to each and every one of you, thank you, thank you, and thank you again for all of the calls, the visits, all acts of kindness that have been shown to this family during this, their time of bereavement. And at a later day, when everyone has been composed, they will say, send a letter of thank you. And again, thank you for being here today to show your support. The family will need a lot of prayer, and we ask that you continue to pray for each and every one of us. Thank you. Can we also thank Dr. Lee and the Locust Grove Church for opening their doors and their hospitality. Come on. Thank you so much. We're going to have reflections at this time, but right before we have reflections, is Mr. Steve and Miss Irene here today? Can you just stand? This was... Um, Aunt Carolyn's neighbors for many years in Charlotte. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming and your support. Um, we're going to have reflections. Um, the family has asked that you limit your reflections to two minutes, and so we ask that you would please respect their wishes on today. We have Adrian, Patrick, Erica, Roberts. Bryant, Patrick, Eugene Harrison, and Tamika Robertson, if you would come in that order.
For those of you that don't know me, my name is Erica Roberts. I'm Thelma's daughter. My Jenny's oldest granddaddy used to like to introduce me as his oldest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Carolyn's oldest niece, nephew. Um, but the reason you all were up there is because of the love that she showed all of us. You know, Carolyn, when I think of her, she was a caring person. Not someone who, like, boasted about her caring. But if I were to ask, like, who has one of Carolyn's dishcloths? <laughs> right? <laughs> we all do, right? And we treasure them, one, because they are the best dishcloths out there. They do better than anything that you can buy. But because she gave it to you because she cared. She loved us through her actions, not necessarily her words or in a boastful way. Carla was my crochet buddy. So when I was 25-ish, one day I just decided I was gonna start crocheting again. Mommy taught me how to crochet when I was like six or seven. And I called my Jenny, and Carla was there. And the two of them were also crocheting. And ever since then, every craft I picked up, every new project I crocheted, I was texting Carla a picture. Oh, look at this new stitch, and she would do the same. I would get anonymous envelopes in the mail with patterns and needles and yarns that she would just send. She was special, not boastful, just special. She just loved us from her heart. Um, and that's kind of what I see you all reflecting here, both in the choir and here. I know most of us are Patrick Kreitz, like we're all related in some way. You all know we have this really strong fussing gene. <laughs> right. uh -huh. <laughs> we get it honest and every single one of us has it. But curling had it. <laughs> she could fuss up a storm. She would fuss at you for, I mean, in my, ch my childhood memories, I can remember her fussing at James <laughs> for just about anything. I can remember her fussing at, at what I call Uncle Bubba, Melvin. You know, because of some joke he played that she didn't like to play on her. She fussed at all of us. But the more you knew Curl and you realized her fussing was her love language. She fussed at us because she loved us. That was her way of poking fun at us and tickling us and just making us smile. And I love to remember her little grin when she was fussing at us. And I, really, I challenge all of us just to remember her that way. Not to remember her illness, because now she's free. Yes. But to remember her for her caring, for her love, for her little grin, for the giggle between Mommy and Lois and Curl. Just remember those things about her. That's who you need to remember. Right now, she is up there looking down on us, and I'm sure she's pleased to see us all here. Yes. She's pleased to see how we've grown up and definitely looking after us. Yes. Looking after you, Patrick, and your boys. Fussing with a granddaddy, probably. Crafting with my Jay, giggling with Lois. She's good. Yes. She's good. She's good. And we should just bask in the love that she gave us while we were here. Praise God. Thank you. Um, 
And that, that's who I care about was. Uh, she was in everybody's life to make them their best selves. Um, and because of that, Patrick today is, um, you know, drawing skin, drawing on canvas, and making some of the best murals in Charlotte. Yeah. Mac, uh, Mac 
and say, okay, Patrick, one, two, yeah. three, and Patrick would go, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two. <laughs> and, and, and that was it. I said, so what you gonna do? I mean, that's what he was saying. Like, what happens after 10? But, but Carolyn would always stick up for her pain. And I just wanna let y'all know, it's not, it, it's, it's a breathing time, it's a morning time, but it is so much a happy time because your sister is not, she's not in any pain. She's, she's healed. God has, it, it, it's what, what Paul says in the Bible, I have ran the good race, I yes. fought the good fight. Yes. I now know what that means because I know Carol. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to each and every one of you. My name is Tanika. I am Lois's oldest daughter. And I have some, I mean, I was trying to figure out what, what stories do I want to tell you because I have so many funny stories about Aunt Carolyn. So I'm going to start to tell you three short ones. So um, Christmas time, she, uh, she called me and she said, I want to go Christmas shopping. I said, should I want to get, I want to go Christmas shopping for, uh, for Patrick. And I said, all right. I said, so I'm not going to bring, I'm not going to come down on the weekend because we move a little slow. So we're going to go during the week when there's not a lot of people out. So I took off from work. She said, what day are you coming? I said, I'm coming Wednesday. She said, okay. She called me three times and asked me what day was I coming. I'm coming Wednesday. <laughs> so I got down there Wednesday and she came to the car, got into the car. I said, where are we going? <laughs> She said, take me to Dollar Tree. <laughs> 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 now, mind you, at the time, she was still driving, and Dollar Tree was right around the corner from my house. Okay. I said, okay, all right, okay. I took off from work to come back and go to Dollar Tree. That's fine. <laughs> all right, so we get in Dollar Tree, and she said, I want to get Patrick some stuff for his new house. I said, okay. So we get over there to the kitchen stuff. She said, oh, I like these little towels for him. I said, okay, so I'm gonna get these two towels for, for, his, for his kitchen. I said, okay. I said, well, you might as well get the mint that matches the towel. I ain't gonna no, get no mint, he can buy his own mint. <laughs> I said, I said, my it's just a dollar, give the boy the mint. <laughs> so then we get in the car, and I said, okay, where are we going next? She said, I'm finished. <laughs> So she always calls me, this is, Patrick and Carlin are like freaking friends. So he calls me when he's mad at his mama, and his mama calls me when she's mad at him. So she called me, and she, she said, I'm so mad at Patrick, blah, 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 blah. And she said, I'm trying to teach him the right thing to do. And I said, yeah, okay. She said, and you know what the Bible say? And I said, oh, Lord. She said, the Bible says you train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he get old, he gonna do what he want to do anyway. <laughs> that is not what the scripture says. So, last and final story. So when she went into the hospital, um, she called me before, and I talked to her every single day. I mean, every single day I talked to our curly three or four times a day. That is my truth. She would be on the phone when I'm washing dishes, when I'm in the car. Where are you going to get your nails done? What you doing, blah, blah, She tuned in on the, on the broadcast, our church broadcast, and I would, she would call me when I got out of the church. Where you get that hair piece from? I seen on <laughs> But, so she called me before she went into the hospital, and she said, um, she gave me a whole list of stuff to do, if and whatever. I said, all right. She said, but when you come up to the hospital, make sure you bring me my blue robe. And she said, if you don't know where it is, Patrick can tell you where the blue robe is. So, no problem. So she had the surgery, long story short. Um, <coughs> Aunt Thelma came down from Richmond. I said, Aunt Thelma, we gotta find her blue robe because she keep asking for this blue robe. Now mind you, she was still in the bed, so she really hasn't started getting up doing physical therapy, but she wanted her blue robe. And so Thelma said, Carlin, we gonna get you your blue robe. We gonna get it. And I, so I said, if we can't find it, we're gonna have to buy her a blue robe. So, um, so she's still asking for the blue robe. 
And um, the time came and she passed. And she didn't have a blue robe. But she, she kept asking for a blue robe. Now, typically, we all ask for a white robe. Yes. And you know what a white robe symbolizes? But it puzzled me about this blue robe. Because when I originally asked her, she said, well, if, if it's my time to go, she said, well, honestly, if I close my eyes and I see Lois and my junior, I'm going to tell you, I ain't coming up there with y'all right now. I'm going back. So in my mind, I wasn't making the correlation because she was still talking junk, right? But the time came and she transitioned, and I was like, why is she asking, why was this blue robe so significant to her? And as I was driving home one day from, from, from Charlotte, from the hospital, I was reminded about a lady that had an issue of blood. In the New Testament, there is a passage that talks about a woman who had an issue of blood. And the Bible says that she pressed toward Jesus and pressed through the crowd and she touched the hem of his garment. But what was so ironic to me is when I did the study, the hem of the garment is blue. And blue is symbolic to him. Blue is symbolic to heavenly places, a heavenly realm. So I said, you know what, Lord? She didn't get her blue robe down here. And while you might be waiting on your white robe,
shadows grasp and he leaves me beside quiet springs he restores my fair and he helps me Oh,
blessed be the name of the Lord. I said, blessed be the name of the Lord. sometimes we tell people not to cry, we shouldn't do that. Amen. Grief is a part of the process. Actually, grief, grief is the price you pay for yes. loving somebody. Yes. And so the fact that you can grieve somebody means you have loved somebody. Amen. Uh, the scripture says in the revelation that he shall wipe all of our tears away. If you're not crying, he ain't got nothing to wipe away. So what I'm saying to you is it is okay to cry, it's okay to grieve. Because he will wipe your tears away. It's the Holy Ghost that gives comfort to us in these seasons. Amen. But I want to do something before I get into my, my very short 10-minute sermon. Uh, and it may seem strange to some of you, but it's something in my heart to do. Um, let me talk about family real quick. When, when you have, when you're blessed with family, you should be grateful uh, who God has given you in your life. I, Patrick, uh, Legacy is so rich, it runs deep. Uh, we are, we don't, I think uh, my cousin spoke about that. We don't have to talk, we don't get to talk and see each other a whole lot. Everybody's in their own corner of the world. We're raising new families, we're doing so many different things. But let me say this for the record it has nothing to do with our love for one another. Amen. Now, I want to, we're going to get together, we're going to do all those things, but I thank God for what we've already established. 
as a family, what I gleaned from being being a part of the Patrick family is, is so deep, and I want to give some flowers while we can yet hear them. And no, in no particular order, I want to start down here by saying to my, I talked last night, that Patrick's supposed to be my little cousin, be more like a little brother because when he came along, I thank God, I remember when they brought him to Mon Jenny's house, he was this big, and uh, I was so glad, even as he grew up, because I wasn't the only darkest one in the room. <laughs> Praise the Lord, we got some chocolate, add it to the equation. <laughs> so let me tell y'all right quick, I ain't gonna try to be demons and all this stuff. I, this is a eulogy, the word eulogy means to speak well of. I'm yeah. gonna speak well of my art today, and I'm gonna lace it with some scripture, but I thank God for your life, and I remember when you came home, man, it was such an amazing, amazing time, and you were her absolute world in her heart. And, and, and it is true that her spirit lives on inside of us. That is true. You want to feel her even closer to you, even in the days to come. Amen. And when those waves of grief come, when it's time to cry. I was driving my truck one day, eating an apple, three months after my mom passed, and all of a sudden I started crying. I pulled over crying, and I was pretty back in driving, going back today. That's natural, because she loved you just that much. And I salute you for being close to her like you were and looking out for your mom. Can y'all give my cousin, my little brother, I want to say thank you to my Uncle Hassel. Now, when we were growing up, cousins, y'all back me up, we didn't really say Aunt Carolyn and Aunt, yeah, we just said, we called him by the first name. Now, it wasn't no disrespect, because, you know, we never disrespected our aunts and uncles, you know. But uh, I, I'll say to my Uncle uh, Hassel, uh, I, I think you need to hear that, I tell my wife all the time, uh, a great part of who I am came from my uncles. And I remember, and I know Curly probably had something to do with this, because I know her, and at, even as I was growing up, my father wasn't in the home, and every time you all would come in town, you would take me with you in that brown Volvo. <laughs> Did that Volvo ever break down? <laughs> that thing lived forever, bro. And I remember listening to, used to listen to uh, light jazz all the time. And to this day, I, I, that's what I put on when I'm in the shower. Like jazz, your influence, and, and thank you for taking me under your wing. You don't know what those days and Saturdays did for me. Me just riding around with you. And I remember, and you're not gonna believe this, but there, there's, a, there's a watch that I wear today. You had to watch something like this when I was growing up. And I, I always fell in love with this style of a watch because I watch you be a businessman, I watch you uh, being married to my Aunt Carolyn. I wanna say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To my Uncle Ron, who is, who is uh, another, I'm, I'm going to put Uncle Ron and Uncle Melvin and Uncle Bubba in the same boat. Uh, I consider them to be the business guys of our family, and, and uh, I've grown into that world and in, in the business world in the last few years. I want to say thank you to you two for being that influence as well of uh, taking care of business. You never know who's watching you, Saints. You never know who's paying attention to you, watching your life. St. Francis of Assisi said something very, uh, very powerful. He said, preach the gospel and use words if you have to. Yes. Yes. Paul said, we are living letters seen and read of the man. You never know who's really watching. As young as I was, I was watching every move that you guys made. And the good part of who I am, especially in the business world, I want to say thank you to both of you as well. Can y'all give them a hand? <laughs> Last but the not least, I hope my wife don't be embarrassed. But there are certain things I do around the house, and I get my, if something breaks down, I go to fixing stuff. And my wife, she said, oh, that's just so attractive. I love when something fixing this time. I said, hand me another wrench. <laughs> she, she likes that. But I was just, I get that from my granny, and I get that from Uncle James. When we were coming up, he taught us how to get under the car, change the oil, change starters, and a good eddy fussing back and forth for which wrench to use. Uh, we, we would be building uh, motors on, on, on go-karts, and, he, and, he, and he, took, he took time to include in everything that, that his son would do. He took time to make sure I played baseball. He took time to make sure I played basketball, and now I was there working on cars. Uncle James, I love you, and I thank you for what you have done for me. I still need to be done for I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Um, let me move to the message. You don't have to turn here very quickly. Luke chapter number 22 and verse 
verse 42. Uh, Father, if you are willing, take away this cup from me. Ooh. Nevertheless, not my will but yours be done. Not my will. This is a very common narrative and story in the scripture. I want to just pull one point from the scripture to highlight my aunt's life. She named me, don't y'all call me this after this sermon. She, she named me, my nickname, Henry. And as I got older, I realized Henry was the little mischievous character in the newspaper of the <laughs> So she, Carolyn is the reason why we like Chick-fil-A. Say amen. amen. She loves Chick-fil-A. She's the reason why we ate Mickey Hill almost every single Friday. <laughs> we wore it out. And I was young, and I would run around every store we went in. My mom would tell me, you want to you run, I'm going to whip your tail. Well, of course, our Carolyn was always with us. And I would run up the aisle she's on, and she'd come and pull me into her. And she reached out to me, I'm going to whip you. <laughs> But one thing, I'll, I'll say this before I move forward, that we forgot in our, in our, our reflections of Aunt Kellen. Kellen's mantra, so funny. First of all, she whispered all the time. What do you whisper about? Can't nobody hear you. My mom and family just said, hey, is the house bug? Why y'all whispering? I'm going to say this, I hope nobody's here from this church, but it was so funny. <laughs> Carla's mantra, she couldn't stand nosy people. Wow. <laughs> and sometimes it wasn't even nosy, she was just paranoid about the people. So I can't watch you go to that, that church is not too. Don't get in my business. No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> Somebody said that her sickness was a sign of strength. And she did, she carried it so well. She carried it so well that her whole life she dealt with sickness, but you just didn't look at her like she was a sickly person because she was so fiery. And, and, and so um, uh, she taught us something that the scripture reflects in the book of Luke in this 22nd chapter. If you take the time to read it, it's very easy to read, easy to understand. Uh, Jesus is in a place uh, called Gethsemane. And he's in the place, and it's also referred to as the Mount of Olives, same region, same place. And, and when you look up that, you know, you look up that word Gethsemane uh, to do a word study, you'll find that it means olive press. And it allows you to understand, even in the church realm, we understand that the anointing is what destroys the yoke. Yeah. It's the anointing, it's God's power, uh, it's God's will smeared all over your life. And it's given to us to destroy the yoke of the enemy. And so Jesus is in a place of uh, uh, decision making. And I wanted to title this, this quick word, your decision determines your transition. Your decision determines your transition. Jesus is in a place called Gethsemane, which means olive press. And when you look at it a little deeper, and you, there's still modern day olive presses in certain regions of the world, especially the Mediterranean world, where they still take the olives and they press the olives to get what we use today as olive oil. Uh, it's one of the best components to cook with. Uh, it has many medicinal purposes. And when you look at the olive oil, it is gold in color. And remember that somebody say gold. Oh. When you look at it, you grab off your shelf and put it in the glass, typically it's gold in color. And I look at Gethsemane, the place where Jesus was in this text. And he is in the place of pressing. And when you look at the process of, of, of processing the olive to get the oil or get the power out of it, uh, the first thing that they do, they take the olives, they pour it in the big basin, and they crush it with stone. The machines literally crush it with stone to a pulp. And then the next stage of that is that they move it and they put it into these burlap bags, flat bags, and they stack the bags on top of each other, just like this. There's a machine that begins to press it, and begins to press it tighter and tighter and tighter. And oil begins to be released. This is why sometimes God allows pressure to get the best out of us. We don't like these dark moments in our life, but it's the pressure that gets the best out of you. 
and, and understand that God is going to always be God, even in the midst of your struggle, in the midst of your circumstance. He's always going to be God. Somebody, watch this, has to run the machine. Jesus is standing there at your machine. He's allowing us to be pressed on every side. But it doesn't mean that he's mad with you. He's trying to get something out of you. He wants to get something good out of you. And so we understand that no, no growth happens uh, when you're comfortable. There's no growth when you're comfortable. When you're in your most uncomfortable season, that's when the best thing comes out of you. So that machine continues to press, and then they run another cycle. Have you ever gone through something and it looked like you came out of it, and a week later you go right back into it again? You thought an issue was settled, you thought God had answered your prayer, but you start going through this seemingly the same thing again. It's not that you're going through a cycle, it's you're going through a process that requires another round. It's something that God's trying to get out of us. And it's something that I learned, uh, Pastor Chris, that really blessed me when I looked at this auto press, uh, when, it, when the oil began to flow, it didn't look like the oil of the finished product. Mm -hmm. When you look at the oil as it's being pressed out of the olive, it doesn't look like what you buy in the grocery store. I said, what is that? And when you really watch this, when you really watch the process of this pressing that goes on, the first color of the oil when it comes out is red. is red. And I said, well, what's the significance of that? And it came to me so clear. You can't have the gold product, the finished product, the perfection without the blood first. See, we want to jump straight to perfection. And God says, no, there's a process. You got to have my blood on you before I make you as pure gold. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's what, that's what my aunt called that's what she really exemplified. She went through such a pressing but she taught us, number one, how to be real. Because something that we didn't say to be totally honest, you knew what you stood with Carolyn Harris. If she didn't like you, she always kept what the kids call 100. There was no cap in her. She kept it real. If she didn't care for you, she said, I, I don't care for them. She, she was a real person. And here's the thing, when you're stressed out, when you're sick, and you have to go through certain things, it'll make your character get in line. The right season in your life will build your character that you will walk in complete integrity. And sometimes our lives exemplify the pressing so that God can get the best out of us. It's the blood first and the finished product comes out. Gold in nature. Jesus goes into this place, and I'm closing this up now. Jesus goes into this place of pressing and he gets down on his knees. This is what I really love about Jesus, my Savior is that Jesus gets it. Jesus gets you. He gets me. He understands our grief. He understands our inadequacies. That's why he gave us grace and mercy. He is he's wrestling between him being flesh and being God in flesh. He's wrestling between the spirit and his assignment. And he's saying, if it be possible, God, even Jesus tried to get out of it. And he said, there's another way we can get this done. Let's get this done another way. Even to the point, watch this, where the, the scripture says that his, his sweat, he agonized until the sweat dropped as great drops of blood. And that is, a, that is actually a medical issue called hematidrosis, that you can literally agonize so much that your, your capillaries in your brow can burst and blood mixes with your sweat. And he, he began to agonize and he was sweating, sweat and blood mixed because he was trying to see how can I die for Kevin? How can I go through this process for everybody in this room? I got to die and take the penalty for everybody sitting in this room and I'm starting to feel the pain now. So if it be possible, let's do this another way. That's why when I fail, that's why when I mess up, he's patient because he understands the weight of this world. He understands our struggle in the flesh. And let me tell somebody in this room, God ain't mad at you. I know you're not where you want to be and should be, but God's not mad at you. He's still standing there with open arms, saying, I'm ready, come on, come on, take your time, come on, I got you, come on. Because we'll never be perfected until he comes and gets us anyway. Jesus is there, he's struggling with, do I die for these people? He died for people who hadn't even been born yet. The Bible says while we were yet sinners, Christ died 
So for every sin that you have committed and will commit in the future, he took on every sin for you. And this is what he was grappling with. God, I love him, but God, this doesn't feel good. And one thing that's told me about this text is that he asked God a question that God never answered. What do you do when God doesn't answer your prayer? It doesn't mean that God is mad at you. It means he has you exactly where he wants you. What? To prove to you that he can be your strength in your weakest moment. He can be your strength. So he's wrestling. And he has, watch this, a decision to make. He has to say, am I going to die for them? Am I going to follow through with, with this crucifixion? I know what's coming. And then he, he, he takes a moment. This is why God gives us a space and, and to, to turn it around because he gave Jesus a moment to turn around. The first part of the verse says, if it be possible, let this cup pass for me. No answer. And then the right. spirit man kicks in and he says, you know what? Not as I will. Yeah. 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 But that will be done. Yeah. I'm going to close it by saying like this. Doctor called me five o'clock in the morning. Said, your mama just said she's ready to go be with God. Uh, and I knew at that point that nothing I could do at this point. Because I know she loved me. Went in, went in the room. I think my family had left at that point and went in the room and she was in so much pain. Like our color was in so much pain. Uh, I said, okay, God, here's my guest in the experience. I said, if you're not going to heal her, take her. My decision had to determine my transition. Lois's decision, I'm ready to go. Walked her into her transition. It's crazy. I curled and said, take it out. She said, take, take the life support off. See, you go out of here in victory when God lets you make the decision. <laughs> Try hard. Like, mm, I'm going to go like that. Who am I to judge? 
But let the life I live speak for me. She already, she already preached her own funeral. As many times as she, she's been sick and bounced back, even when they told me she was sick unto death, I was like, oh, okay. Why did you do that, brother? Okay. She bounces back so many times. She just lived as long as she wanted to live. And that takes so much strength. I pray to God, however he takes me, he gives me that same strength. He gives me that same anointing. The God has shown us. Patrick family, the Lord has been good to us. He's been good to us. Let me all stand. I want to allow in 10 minutes on the James. Forgive me. Everybody stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't have to hold hands if you're uncomfortable in this climate to do that. I want us to bow our heads and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day of gathering to celebrate this life of our aunt, our sister, our friend, our cousin, Aunt Carolyn. Father, I pray you do what you always do in these following days. God, be strength to this family, to these sisters, to the brothers, to the nieces and nephews, and these grandbabies, to the Son of God. I pray in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, be a comforter in the name of Jesus. Father, these days to come, they're over the midnight hour, riding down the street, sun is shining, raining on the outside. As these waves of emotions continue to flow, God, continue to strengthen us through the spirit of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Father, those of us who are left here, let us complete our assignments. Let us give you praise and worship for the rest of our life. For God is the greatest power. And because he's the greatest power, we shall never be and God, I thank you now in Jesus' name. I thank you now in Jesus' name. I want to be a little selfish real quick. Would you stretch your hands towards my family real quick on the front row? She's lost two sisters. They are very, 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 very close. Father, in the name of Jesus, we all join in faith. And we decree strength and peace. Sleep and rest at night. Peace that goes beyond her understanding. Let it guard her heart and mind for the Holy Ghost. Let it guard her heart and mind through Christ Jesus. And God, with long life, you shall satisfy her in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you now that she shall live and not die. And she will continue, hallelujah, to declare the works of the Lord. Bless her husband, bless her family. God, do the same thing for these brothers and these and the, and the siblings in the name of Jesus supernatural strength and peace that they can't even explain in the name of Jesus and God do the same for the rest of us it is so in Jesus name would you clap your hands and give God the best praise that you can give us at this time uh, we're going to ask the morticians to come as you are standing, ask them to come. Family and friends, before the service started, things looked dim to you outside. No. It has started raining, but this too shall pass. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Family, I am telling you that we feel so much bereavement in our hearts for you. The Lord will carry you. He'll carry you all through a storm. He'll see you through. And when things go wrong and friends are few, just lean on him and he'll carry you. Sister Charlene Patrick and Sister Adrian Patrick has already thanked so many of you all doing their uh, talk to you. But we would also like to thank our poor people. We would like to thank you, Pastor Bobson, for your wonderful words of comfort in all to this family and even doing your officiating. Pastor, we thank you so much for your words of comfort to this family and to all of us. We like to recognize Minister Patrick and Minister Farrar. And I think we missed Pastor Richardson. We would like to acknowledge yes. Pastor yes. Richardson. <laughs> if we have missed anybody, we would like to thank Lottie. Daddy, and everybody. 
anything else that we can do for you, please do not be hesitant to call us. At this time, Pastor, will you give us benediction? Let's lift our hands. Let's leave this place without the presence of God to go with us in Jesus' name. We thank you for us get home safely without incident or accident. In the name of Jesus, let us continue to fellowship in the spirit of love. And we claim even now, even by this time next year, nothing fragmented, nothing lost. In the name of Jesus, we pray it is so. Everybody shout, amen. amen.